In this video, I will demonstrate how to create an installer in Visual Studio 2012. First, uh, let's create a demo project. And we can call this a, we can create this as a standard Windows uh, application. It's fine, and we can accept all the default values for this. So let's say this is our application uh, that we wish to uh, create an installer for. And uh, let's place some sort of a button on here just so it looks like um, it does something. And we'll call this uh, message box show. Okay, so this is, uh, let's say this is our application right here. And um, so in Visual Studio 2010, what you used to be able to do is to right click Add New Project. And here under Other Project Types, there was a setup and deployment a project type that was a Visual Studio based setup and deployment type. But here, you can clearly see that the only option here is to enable Install Shield Limited Edition, also known as the Install Shield Lite Edition. So, um, if I double click on that, it brings up the browser, the following browser window, which essentially says download the Install Shield Lite Edition. And it, it really wants you to enter registration information. So let's uh, go ahead and do that quickly. So um, once you have the information filled out, just click on download now. Oh, well, let's put a slightly different phone number. And um, once you submit the form, it will allow you to finally download this uh, software, which uh, will take a few minutes. Now, interestingly enough, uh, you actually have to close Visual Studio here and exit out in order for uh, Install Shield to actually function. So, um, okay, so uh, once this is uh, done, we can run the installer, which will then walk us through the installation process. So next, accept the agreement and the default installation is fine. Give it a moment for the uh, security prompt to come up. It's always a joy to sit through that. And uh, finally it starts installing.
So it's kind of a slow installation process, unfortunately. Um, and there's surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of files being installed. It's just very, very slow. And finally, uh, the installation has finished and it has updated uh, Visual Studio with the uh, um, latest uh, version of Install Shield Lite. Now, I don't have any affiliation with Install Shield whatsoever, and uh, to be honest, I'm not very fond of it uh, either. But uh, the old Visual Studio uh, solution installer uh, project type is gone. Uh, so there's no such thing in Visual Studio 2012. The only thing that comes close to it is the Install Shield Lite Edition, which does something similar. So, with that having said, that let's fire back uh, Visual Studio again. And uh, we'll bring up the um, uh, demo uh, Windows application that we just created. So uh, let's bring up our little application here again. Which is also very, very slow. Um, so here it is again. So now if we try to add uh, a new project again. The first time that you try to bring up the new project screen, you may have to wait several minutes to uh, have it come uh, up. Uh, and this is probably due to the installer, the project type that the uh, install shield is added, which uh, has to be set up the first time it's run. And finally, uh, a year later, um, you will get your new project. Uh, a screen. Um, so now if you click on setup and deployment under other project types you'll see that the install shield limited edition project type is available for us. So um, let's uh, create a setup project. Um, sure setup pro uh, 2 is fine. Uh, well let's give it a more descriptive name maybe was forms app Application installer. Maybe put a two in here. Really, I mean, you can call it whatever you want. Really, it doesn't matter. So, if um, the other screen that you will undoubtedly see is this activate or register for free copy of install shield screen. And when you select activate, it asks you for a whole um, but your number will actually bring up the browser. Well, it was supposed to actually bring up the browser. And the serial number should be here somewhere. They actually email it to, to you, I believe. So you just have to enter the serial number that they email you in this box and click Activate. And I obviously uh, skipped the actual uh, activation code <laughs> just so people don't copy my activation code. So hit Finish here. 
and it should resume um, <coughs> creating the setup project for you. And uh, this is really it. This is uh, the wizard essentially that replaced the built-in uh, uh, setup project. So here I've got some buttons at the bottom here. So uh, specify your company name. Uh, let's uh, specify our company name. Um, this is my company here. Um, application name is fine. Um, I need to change my link here. And click on the next step. Now here, um, what operating systems uh, do I want to target? I do want to have specific operating systems. I no longer support Windows 2000. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of Windows Vista either, but I'm going to leave that checked. The rest of them are fine. Uh, if I had any other software that I ne needed to install before installing my application, I could include it here, including .NET Framework versions listed here, uh, or SQL Server Express Edition. But I don't for this application, so I'm just going to skip that. Um, we don't have an installation architecture. Uh, as far as the application files, so here I want to add project outputs. And I want primary output. And I want to right click here on that entry and say resolve project output and choose my main application executable here. You might have several assemblies here. You want to choose the main executable. And um, that's really it for this one. Um, if you have any data, you can put it in the app data folder. Um, if you have any uh, common DLLs, libraries that you want to share between your applications, you can put that here as well. Um, but really, this is essentially it. If you have any registry keys, you can select yes and add your registry keys here, which is pretty straightforward. Um, now, on this main tab, there's a general information section. Um, yes, we do want to return. And here you can see some additional details. Uh, such as what's your product version. I, I'm not particularly fond of this version format, so I'm just going to call it 1.0.0. Um, if I want to change the installation directory, right now, install directory is pointing to program files folders, the name of my company, and the subfolder is my product name. We obviously don't want that, so let's call this uh, Windows Forms Application 2, maybe. Even though that's not a whole lot better, but it's better than what it was before. Um, and then there's some additional information here uh, that you can fill out, uh, such as uh, support information, uh, product URL, and that sort of thing, which you can uh, obviously also do. So. Once I am happy here, um, let's see, getting started, uh, project assistant, okay. So once I'm happy here, I'll click on installation interview. Uh, do, do you want to display a license agreement dialog? Right now it's set to yes. You don't obviously have to. Uh, do you want to prompt the user to enter their company name and username? No, I really don't. Um, and then really just click on this button down here. And uh, that's that's really it um, as far as the actual installation uh, steps are concerned. Uh, so if I right click here and uh, build the solution right now, it should um, create an output uh, for me. And uh, if we look at that folder, one last thing um, that you may run across is long file path when you're cr trying to create um, uh, the installer. The installer is, uh, program is actually not very smart. 
So in this case, because I saved the project in my documents folder, it's complaining that um, it, it is too long and it cannot create uh, as many subfolders as the, the install shield is attempting to do. So a way to um, go around it is to, um, it's actually very simple, uh, to close the project solution and then I'm going to come over here where my uh, project is and I'm going to cut it from here and I'm going to move it to somewhere on my C drive um, and uh, paste it just so I can uh, continue and I'm going to paste it here so uh, now it should have enough uh, of a shorter project uh, namespace to be able to do what we were attempting to do. So we're going to open the project solution from its uh, new location and bring up the project again. So let's right click on it and clean the solution first just to make sure there's no residue uh, uh, files from our previous attempt and then let's uh, rebuild the solution. So it should hopefully run through this time and sure enough the rebuild has been successful. So um, if we open the folder in Explorer now we see that there's our setup uh, project here and there should be some install files here ah here it is so that's the other thing I never really understood why they felt obligated to go so many layers deep with this installer file but it's actually <laughs> here under disk image disk one this is actually what you want and you know just if you just see the path length here is is just ridiculously long and I cannot think of any reason why they should have had to go this many levels deep but the good news is here are your installer files here's the uh, installer MSI and uh, really all you have to do is distribute um, these files the setup uh, exe setup ini and the windows application installer msi uh, on windows platforms you could just technically just double click on the msi and it should bring up the installer for me and uh, it's, it's a standard installer you can walk through it next and it'll, as you can see my company name is where the actual main uh, project folder is followed by the name of the application that I specified and it goes through and it installs it and finish and uh, that's really it. It, it it now installed the application for us I hope that you found this uh, tutorial useful uh, feel free to leave comments uh, or questions that you may have. Uh, be very specific and I'll be, try to give you specific answers. Thank you.